Hello Vicious, welcome back to my channel. And as y'all know, we're living in a bit of a crazy time. So I hope y'all are staying healthy and whatnot. But today I'm just gonna make a really quick video about 24 art tips or hacks that really helped me develop a shorthand when I make my artwork, which is just pretty much like a shortcut to just achieving these types of looks quickly or just having like, you know, it's like a bit of a, it's like a little bit of a quick reminder in your head for when you wanna achieve this type of look the next time. So there's not gonna be too much of like a scientific explanation behind every single tip because there are 24 tips and I just wanna go by them as quickly as possible. So yeah, um, because I just turned 24 a few weeks ago, I'm going to make it 24 art tips. So sorry if I'm bullshitting some super like intelligent concept that was developed behind this type of art skill or whatever. I'm probably gonna BS a lot of this stuff and just be like, this is just how you do this to make it look like this because it's just interesting or whatever. So we'll just see how it goes. And yeah, let me know which of these tips work for you or if you got any other tips up your sleeve that you wanna share. So number one, if you want to make an object in a drawing come closer to you, thicken the lines and make them darker and chunkier while making the lines going backwards thinner to create that illusion of depth. Then number two is to use warm tones as highlights to make an object feel like it's popping forward while using cool tones as shadows to make it feel like it's going backwards to create that illusion of depth with color. Tip number three is pretty self-explanatory, but if you want to create depth in an environment, make objects in the foreground bigger while objects in the background are smaller. Tip number four, objects in the foreground are further apart while objects in the background start to get closer together. Number five is if you want to push the depth even further in your drawing, you can add in some white or whatever base color and fade it out a little bit just to create that space between your foreground elements and your middle ground and background elements. This kind of creates a sense of space between them so they don't feel like they're as glued together. This relates to tip number six, which is very similar to tip number five, which is objects in the far background tend to be faded out more just simply due to air particles in the sky or air pollution as a reminder to be a better person to our earth. So this is a common mistake I see a lot of people do, which is bringing the horizon line straight in the middle of the composition, which tends to make it too even but I'm guilty of it too, so that brings me to tip number seven, which is to bring the horizon line low to the ground or bring it high up, but for this example, I'll choose the lower option. This makes your composition slightly more dynamic and interesting and also allows the space above the ground for your character to be acting or doing things instead of having the ground take up half the space that you really don't need in the screen. Tip number eight, I'm pretty sure a lot of you are familiar with this one, but one thing I like to do to adjust my composition is to make sure I have the rule of thirds there and I would normally have my character or the important subjects of the composition lay on either one of the lines or one of the intersections of the rule of thirds. I'm not too picky about this type of rule, uh, someone just made it up, so. Tip number nine is to bring the horizon line upward if you want to display more information about what's going on on the ground. And if you have two subjects in a composition, make sure you avoid tangents with the lines, which is when the lines are pretty much just touching each other, but make sure that you make a clear sense of overlap by bringing one of the subjects forward so that the lines don't match up and blend in with each other. Clarity is really important if you want people to understand what you just drew, so that brings me to tip number 11, which is to make sure that the silhouette of your character is clear, to make sure that people understand their pose at first glance. So this pose is where the character's arm is kind of just not clear, but I'm trying to make the arm behind the head clearer by bringing that space out between the head and the arm. 
It's definitely more clear once you shade the character in and look at the silhouettes or the blobs of color because that way you can kind of tell what the character is doing without the assistance of the lines. And this is important because in animation, you got these characters moving quickly and you want to make sure that people understand it when they see them. You see, this silhouette looks like a fucking cow. Tip number 12 is also really similar to this, where if you're composing a scene where, for example, two characters are talking to each other, the character in the foreground tends to always be more cut off naturally because they are closer to the camera, but you want to make sure that the foreground character is also clear, like their silhouette is readable instead of just being an anonymous blob again, because People are watching this stuff really fast and you want to make sure people get it the moment they see it. Tip number 13 is to remember that the eye furthest away from the viewer does not actually shrink on the character's design. It might just be skinnier, but it's still the same height. And if you have problems with the nose and the mouth placement, tip number 14 is to remember to bring it to the side that the character is facing and you can always flip it around and perform some plastic surgery. Tip number 15 is to remember that the eyes kind of get squished and pulled by the eyebrow movement. So if you're mad, the eyebrows might squish your eyes lower. And if you're surprised, your eyebrows are going to pull your eyes and face up a little more. Tip number 16 is to just generally remember that the arms kind of fall down below the under butt area or upper thigh area. And they don't hang below that really, unless if you're slender man. Tip number 17 is if you don't know what to design for a character, just take an object in your house and try to design a character out of that shape. And this character is clearly a Yu-Gi-Oh and Ash hybrid, so yeah, this is what plants do. Tip number 18 is if you want to quickly just color a character in on one layer, just start with the skin and don't worry about where it bleeds through and then overlap with the hair, the clothes, and the accessories. Normally this makes coloring a lot faster for me. So tip number 19 is to choose the color similar to the character's background, make a clipping mask, and overlay it on top of the character to make it feel like she's more integrated in the background. And this is normally a cheat for if you don't know how to pick the colors from the get-go. Tip number 20 is if you want to make a bold highlight, you can just use white and color in the direction of where the light source is coming from. And you can also duplicate the white add a Gaussian blur and make it have a glowy effect. So tip number 21 is if you want to make flat coloring a little bit more interesting, you can actually manually scratch in that color, kind of like you're coloring in with a pencil, and just give the hair or give the object some texture instead of just having it be a flat block of color. This is normally used for comic books and gives it a very graphic feel and it might sometimes be too harsh so tip number 22 is you can definitely balance that stuff out by adding some soft gray areas to remind people that hey there's a face going on in there and tip number 23 is another way to make flat coloring interesting is to just block in areas where there's only supposed to be the shadows. So originally where the shadows are, you would just be coloring with the base color, but in the areas of the shadows, this kind of gives it a very cut out feeling, which makes it more flat. And you know, it depends on the style you're going for. And tip number 24 is if for things like hair, where you can add in things to fill in that big empty space, you can add lines. But if you do, remember to keep them uneven to make it interesting. I'm sorry that that's the theme of this video, but yeah, that's art, I guess. Anyway, I hope y'all got something out of this video from one of those 24 tips and maybe it will help you develop a quicker shorthand for when you're making your drawings or artwork because for me specifically, I'm a storyboard artist so at work we have to go by really fast to get things done so I've kind of just developed this mindset of how to fix things or fix these art problems just really quickly and it doesn't require you to really have a Wikipedia explanation for every single reason why you're doing it. Sometimes it's just like 
like that's just what it takes to make it look believable. So you just gotta do what you gotta do and yeah. Anyway, again, I hope y'all are staying healthy and I'll see y'all in the next one. So see ya later and stay wholesome, bitches.